to my live. Um, today we are going to be trying um, a reverse method with Mod Podge. One sec here. I didn't set my computer up. Oh, I thought it was so organized here and I'm not going to be able to see comments. I am going to be doing um, experimenting with using napkins to do the Mod Podge transfer method. Um, now, last week I did the Mod Podge transfer method using paper, which is how I always do it. Um, and I had someone in the comments say, what would happen if you just used a napkin? The paper would be thinner. Do you think that it would transfer well? And uh, I thought, that's genius. Why did I not think of that? I need to test it. So I thought, okay, so this week I am going to test using a napkin, doing the Mod Podge transfer method, and um, see how it goes. Okay, let's see. If you're on here live and uh, joining along, let me know where you're watching from, and uh, we'll have some crafting fun. Oh my goodness, 11 bottles of Mod Podge that you've used on your Mardi Gras float. Unbelievable, that's a lot of Mod Podge. I'm brand spanking new to decoupage and learning quickly in time for my bathroom remodel. Awesome. Um, hi Paige, glad you're here. Okay, so what we're going to do, I've got everything all set up. I've kind of done this in steps because when you're doing the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method, you have to let it sit for 24 hours. So I did the one, the two examples yesterday, they've sat all day, but I've printed off some um, steps so we can go right through the steps and then end up finishing them off with the ones that I did yesterday. So you can see right from the beginning to start. Oh my goodness, look at all the people we got popping up. This is fantastic. I love seeing, somebody is here from Japan, four o'clock in the morning. Welcome, California, New Brunswick, Indiana, England, Halifax. Hi guys, thanks for joining along. Um, okay, so let's bring the camera down and we can get to business. Bring this over here onto the work surface and you can see a lot better what I've got going on. And if you have any questions, I'm gonna try to keep up and uh, answer as much as I can. Okay, so I love doing custom napkins. I make my own custom napkins with one ply of a napkin. This one ripped a little bit, but it'll still work. Print on them, and then you can just straight decoupage after you've printed on them onto your projects. But I thought, what if we did kind of that same method, printed on it, reversed the graphic, and then did the Mod Podge transfer method. So then after it sat for 24 hours, we can rub the paper off, but it's not gonna be a whole bunch of paper. It's only gonna be a thin napkin. Is that graphic gonna stay? I've never done this. We're gonna try it and see if it works. If it works, it's absolutely brilliant and game changer. So. Um, first thing you're going to do is I've got a piece of computer paper. I've got one ply of my napkin. I've ironed it a little bit so it's nice and flat. And I've got some double-sided tape. I'm going to put the double-sided tape along the outside of the paper. You don't need very much. It's just going to hold that napkin in place. There we go. And then we are going to lay that napkin down on the paper, making sure that it's pressed right into that tape. So this is going to run through our printer and we wanna make sure that we have it taped down really well on that paper. If you don't, we don't want this getting jammed up in our printer. I've never had any issues for all the years that I have been crafting, um, have anything jam up in my printer but you still want to be really careful. Now we're just gonna cut off the extra napkin around the edges. 
And these napkins were only two ply. Um, so, and a lot of napkins are three ply. So make sure when you're taking your napkins apart that you only have one ply of the napkin. Now, if you have trouble with your fingers and rubbing off the paper, you can, you can use this method, print on it without reversing the text, and then just straight decoupage, cut it out and then decoupage it onto your project. That's an, an alternative method of doing this. Um, but like I said today, we're gonna try the Mod Podge. Um, Portugal, Switzerland, Washington. Would a glue stick work instead of a two-way tape? Yeah, for sure that you could use a little bit of glue stick. You just wanna make sure that you have it just around the edges. Um, you don't wanna waste any of the area that you can print on because if you have glue stick like in further and then you print on it, it's not going to work. So this is, um, you can find this, we can find this at our dollar store and it's really reasonable and it goes quite a long way. So if you don't have any of that double-sided tape, I would pick some up. Uh, you can also find it on Amazon too, and it's really reasonable. How do I do the reverse writing? I have a full tutorial on how to reverse your graphics in Google Docs. I'll put that link in the description after this video and you can watch it. It's really easy to do in Google Docs and Google Docs is free and you can reverse your images. Now, if you want to head to my Etsy store, any of the graphics that I use in any of my videos are available there. And one of the files is already reversed, so you don't need to fiddle around with that. And that's an option too. Okay, so we now have our napkin on our piece of computer paper. We're gonna put this in our printer, making sure to feed it into the printer so it's gonna print on the napkin side. We don't wanna print on the paper side. My computer, I have to fly, uh, put it in upside down so the napkin's down and it feeds through like this and prints on it. So this is what you end up with. I've put, I'm doing two projects. So I printed off two of the graphics and what you're going to do next, I've measured these so I know they're gonna fit my projects. I measured, I put this into Google Docs. They're already reversed and then size them within Google Docs to um, fit my project. Uh, careful what brand you get on Amazon because I got one that, yeah, this, yeah, the one that I've gotten off Amazon before was a good brand. I'll put the link to that. Um, temp spray adhesive works well to secure the paper. I'm not quite sure if a spray adhesive would be a bit too aggressive with if you would be able to get the napkin off afterwards. That would be interesting to see if that worked. Okay, so somebody said that it, the temp spray works great. Okay, so that would be something that you could use too. The wording or the graphic needs to be on the inside of a text box in order to reverse it. There's lots of tutorials. Yes, I have a full tutorial. It's really easy to follow um, on Google Docs and uh, it will guide you through if you need to reverse any of your own text. So what we're gonna do now, we're just going to cut this napkin off of the computer paper the computer paper that I have underneath, of course, because I'm a thrifter. Let's see if I can get it apart here. We'll go in my scrap paper bin to make into homemade paper eventually. Even the napkins too, the little bits of napkins. I never throw anything out. And we have a custom napkin. So this was what I was saying. If you wanted to not reverse the text, you could take this right now and you could decoupage it just like this right onto your project. But today we're going to be doing the reverse technique and see if it works. I find if you're just decoupaging with a napkin, you're gonna kind of, you can blend it in pretty good, but you're still gonna see a little bit of the outline. And when you're doing the reverse technique, it blends in better and it looks like it actually belongs on your project. Um, does it have to be a laser jet printer? It works best with a laser jet printer. You can use an inkjet. It's a bit more tricky and it takes a bit more work, can be done, but a laser jet does work better. Have you ever made your own Mod Podge? 100% I have. It does not work to do this transfer method. The homemade Mod Podge is only good for decoupaging. So if you are putting fabric, if you're decoupaging fabric on something or you're taking a piece of scrapbooking paper and you're decoupaging it on, the homemade Mod Podge works fine. 
if you're doing the transfer method, it does not work well. Uh, do you have a video on tea or coffee dyeing paper? I have all kinds of videos on that. And um, you can f actually find a playlist on my channel with all kinds of coffee and tea staining projects. You'll be watching video, go into that um, YouTube vortex on my channel. You'll find all kinds of <laughs> tutorials on lots of stuff. You'll get sucked right in and you'll, you won't know how to get out after seeing all these crafting projects. Uh, understand, yeah. Why couldn't you use tissue paper? 100% you can use tissue paper. I didn't have any white tissue paper on hand. I only had napkins. If you have tissue paper in your craft room, you can definitely use this. Now I do find that the tissue paper is a bit thicker than the napkins, um, but even still it's better than a piece of paper for thickness. Okay, so we've now got these cut off. I am going to do, I've got this wine bottle that I chalk painted. If you've never painted glass before, I have a full tutorial on how to paint glass so it doesn't chip and it doesn't peel. Um, if you want to check that out because it does work fantastic. So this one I've painted before it's ready to go. We're using Mod Podge matte and um, you can use the glossy but of course after you've done your project you're going to have a glossy finish. The matte is nice to just have a nice matte finish. So here is the difference. If you're doing this on a piece of paper, I paint the Mod Podge on the paper, then lift the paper up and put it on my project. With this napkin, it's too thin and it's too fragile. I don't wanna put that Mod Podge on this and then have to lift it up and put it on the project because it's just, it, it just takes, it just, I don't think it works very well and it's just, you're gonna rip it and it's, it's going to be a little bit more tricky. So what I did and like I said, I haven't done this before. I'm waiting for these other ones to dry. But how I did the, the ones that I tried, I painted the Mod Podge right on the surface and putting it basically where I know that napkin is going to sit. You don't need very much, just a thin layer. If you gob it on too much, then they're gonna have gobs underneath when you rub your transfer off. Okay, so that should be good. Now here's the tricky part because there's no forgiveness. You gotta lay this down and you can't pick it up and move it. So we're going to make sure we have it exactly where we want it. Lie it down, make sure that it's straight. Start from the middle and then press it into that Mod Podge, making sure you're not getting any wrinkles or bubbles. That worked pretty good. I'm always nervous doing these on lives because you never know what's gonna happen. But that went down pretty good. Okay, we don't want any Mod Podge on the top, just underneath, and that's it. Now it takes a little bit of a light finger. You don't wanna rub too hard to get all those little bubbles and wrinkles out. I got a little bit right here where I need to add some Mod Podge underneath. So it lays down flat and that's it. So this one is ready to sit. Now also because the paper is thinner, I don't think you need to let it sit for 24 hours because it's gonna dry quicker because the paper is thinner. So you probably could get away with doing this in the morning and then finishing it off in the afternoon where when you're doing it on paper, I always recommend to leave it for 24 hours. So we're gonna set this aside get caught up here. Where are we at? I use Elmer's glue that is single. Yeah, if you're making your own uh, homemade Mod Podge, then the Elmer's glue works perfect. Tissue paper, the color runs. Yes, if you're using a colored tissue paper and then you're introducing Mod Podge or water to it, it is going to run. So you want to find something that's white. Uh, can I watch this video again? I missed something. Yes, definitely. After this is aired, this will be on my channel and you can go back and watch from start to finish. If you've applied Mod Podge past where the tissue will be laid, will the Mod Podge be noticeable? This happened to me with a transfer on a canvas. It will, you will see it a little bit, especially 
if you've put too much Mod Podge on. If you've put your Mod Podge on too thick, you are gonna see an outline all around your graphic and it's not gonna look nice. That's why I say you don't need very much. You just need a really light coat, fan it out around the edges when you're putting it on and it blends in nice. Okay, so here is where we're at. This is been sitting since yesterday. I did the exact same technique I just did. We're going to see if it works. I'm crossing my fingers it does, because if it does, guys, this is so much easier. I've just got a damp rag, and I'm just gonna dampen that napkin. Oh, look at this. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know when you, you know when you do some, it's just something that's so simple, and it's like, why did I never think about that? But look at, this is working pretty good so far, and it's transferred pretty good. And rubbing off that napkin, you don't need very much water. You just want to apply the water just so, especially on glass bottles, if you're putting too much water on them before you rub the graphic off, it's going to activate that paint underneath on the bottle and it's going to rub off on you. So be very minimal with the water. Okay, so let's just very gently start rubbing here and see if it's going to blend in and if it's going to work. So far, so good. It is rubbing off a little bit. The ink looks like might not have kind of permeated, is that a word, permeated, into the napkin as well as the paper. So it is kind of coming off in a few spots here and there, but it's not bad, not bad. So see, you can see here, it kind of came off a little bit in here, but it's, it's doable. Kind of gives it a rustic look. I don't think I'm gonna put any more water on. I'm just gonna kind of work away with what I've got. And it's not bad. Um, was that a clear or green wine button? Okay. So, so far, so good. I love this quote too. If you find that your paper or your napkin is drying out, sometimes instead of reintroducing the water with the little rag, I'll just dip my finger in the water and just rub it a certain area. And, and then you're not putting too much water on. This is not bad. It's rubbing off pretty good. I'm so used to the paper that I'm kind of not knowing what I'm capable of doing here. I do find that the ink is kind of lifting a little bit. It's almost acting like how a inkjet printer acts. It kind of is lifting the color a little bit. So once you rub off the napkin, would you put a layer of Mod Podge over top to seal the graphic? Yes, you can. My preference is not Mod Podge. I don't like Mod Podge as a top coat. I just find it's thick and it's not actually really crystal clear. Um, my preference as a top coat is polyacrylic sealer. Uh, and that's what my go-to is for sealing any of my projects. So I'm gonna get a little bit aggressive here and see what happens. I actually, you know what I'm finding? Is it's taking me just as long to rub this off as it does the paper and it's uh, uh, mm, I don't know guys so you can see right here so you can see right here see how it's rubbing so this is almost how it acts if you're using an inkjet this was my laser jet and I, I think what it is, is the ink is it doesn't have as much to soak into. So when you do the transfer, it's not transferring as well, if that makes sense. Would a graphic transfer work on a 
white tile. The, the, this transfer method will work on anything that's a chalk painted surface. If you're trying to do it on just a plain ceramic tile, as soon as you, if you don't paint that with chalk paint, as soon as you introduce water to your graphic transfer, uh, it's gonna rub right off. You need to have that chalk paint for that ink to grab onto and transfer onto. If you don't have that, it's not going to um, transfer that well. Okay, so this is not 100%. Um, I get streaks every time I try to use Mod Podge as a top coat, ruin my last project and I knew better. 100%, that's why I do not use Mod Podge. I do not like it as a top coat. It's streaky and it almost has like a, um, it's just not clear, I just don't like it. Would this process work on an unpainted bottle? I'd like to paint the in, no, that's so. That's what I was just saying. This will not work on just a clear surface. It has to have chalk paint. It doesn't even work well with latex paint or acrylic paint. It works best with chalk paint. If you try to do it without having that chalk paint underneath, um, you're probably gonna have a really hard time with it. You read my question, however, I don't believe you answered. Were the bottles, oh, sorry, yes, I was trying to figure out. Yes, they were green. These are the green, I don't know if you can kind of see, see the inside, they're the green wine bottles. Yeah, and that works fine. The color, the color of the bottle, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, if you've got some white chalk paint, and you do the technique to, to paint the glass, um, then it will cover really well. And it doesn't matter what the color of the wine bottle is. Uh, I use matte enamel spray, light sand and spray. Yep, that's, I like the enamel spray too. That works really well also. I have a hard time finding the enamel spray. This guys, is it's not working. It's not, I'm not really happy with it at all. It's really rubbing off and I think it has to do with the ink being able to penetrate into the paper and then go, it, there's just not enough paper for it to transfer onto. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's not up to my standard for a graphic transfer. Um, and I don't know if I have, okay, one second. I'm just gonna grab another sign that I just did this morning and I'll show you the difference. So this is a sign that I did this morning on paper with um, regular on paper with a laser jet printer and you can see how crisp and dark it is and then when we put this beside it see how it's not it's not dark it's not transferred as well mm, I think that might be the issue so we're gonna keep going though and see I don't like giving up um, can you link your chalk paint recipe in this video? Yes, actually, I think I already did. I think if you go down to the description, you'll see my chalk paint video. And you can make chalk paint in any color. Um, I like buying just the little testers of paint at Home Depot, and I'll turn them into chalk paint, and you can use any color. So to attach a graphic to plain, unpainted glass, you use clear adhesive of some sort. So if you go back last week, I'll see if I can find my project. Um, last week I did a video on how to put graphics on plain glass. I still have one of the projects here. And this is what I made. So this is using um, label sheets, shiny label sheets, print on the label sheets, and then use clear shelf liner. And it almost creates like a sticker. I'll show you because I can peel this off. See that? And then you can put it on clear glass. So it's almost like a sticker. If you haven't seen that video, um, it's a lot of fun. And it's the only, one of the only methods that I found that works well on plain glass to transfer a graphic. And then you can see, you can just stick it down and it'll stick to the glass. Now this one, I painted the inside with, um, just enamel, white enamel paint and swirled it around. And I've got this on crooked now, I'm gonna have to fix it. But uh, yeah, that's one way to put graphics on plain glass. I'll put that link to that video 
down in the description after this one's aired. Okay. Um, wasn't sure if the white chalk paint would cover well. Yeah, chalk paint covers the green bottles. Perfect. That frame is to die for. Isn't this frame gorgeous? This was just one that I found at the thrift store and um, painted it with some of my white chalk paint and then distressed it and then added my graphic on the inside. I had to cut a piece of wood. Uh, the glass was missing out of it. So I cut a piece of MDF. I don't know if this is, or I think this is chipboard and uh, cut it to size and then turned it into a sign. Isn't that pretty? Um, would have transferred better if you used poly acrylic instead of Mod Podge. Um, I, it, you can transfer with the poly acrylic. Uh, I don't know if it would work better. I, I don't, I think, I think it's because there's not enough paper for the ink to soak into and then transfer properly. But you know what, that's worth a try. And I will give that a try and see if it works better on the thinner paper. Um, sorry. Where can I find these graphics? So all of these graphics that I use in any of my videos, I have in my Etsy store. And if you're a member of my channel, um, the link to my membership is down below in the description. You can sign up and you'll get 50% off all of my graphics in my Etsy store anytime. Buy as many as you want, just use the discount code. And you'll get, for every one of my graphics, there's a PNG file, a JPEG file, a reversed file, and an SVG file. So you can use these on your Cricut. You can print them, you can do transfers, you can decoupage, uh, so many things that you can do with all these graphics. And there's, I think I have almost 500 graphics in my Etsy store that you can look through. Do you have to be that aggressive though in rubbing off the layer of napkin? Since the napkin is thin and white and the bottle is white, once you rub off the napkin, can you just put a toe? Uh, um, mm, I, I, I don't think so. It was probably hard to see on camera, but I don't know if that would blend in not. And, and that's not so much my worry. My worry was like how it's like the ink hasn't actually transferred all that well. I mean, it still looks nice, but it's not like that crisp color. So I think that's just something if you wanted to try to make it work and, and you're having a hard time rubbing off all of that paper, um, you just have to maybe fool around with it and try maybe putting a top coat on and see what it looked like. I've tried a light damp rag to wipe the graphic. If the lettering was a bit smudgy, did that improve the look? If So when you're finished rubbing off the graphics and you're putting on your top coat, as soon as you put your top coat on, it is gonna brighten up your graphics and make them look darker. So you can just see by just um, rubbing on this, it's made them look darker. I mean, that's not bad, but it's just not as good as with the paper. Okay, so. That's not a complete fail, but it was worth a try. And uh, not not 100% with that one. So what I also did was I also had another frame and I did one on a piece of wood. So we're gonna see if this transfers better on, this is like a piece of chipboard. We're gonna see if it transfers better on wood opposed to the glass. Uh, I guess if you wanted to stress look that, yeah, exactly. If you wanted to stress look that is, this is a hundred percent looks fine. So let's see how this one goes. We're going to lightly dampen the napkin and let's see, we're going to cross our fingers. Maybe this will transfer better on a piece of wood. And then we'll know if we're doing a project with glass, um, to not maybe do this one, use the regular paper, but if you're doing it on wood, you can definitely use a napkin. Uh, what free font program do you recommend? I'm especially looking for font styles that have the ability to add tails to the first and last letters in a word. Um, uh, there's a program for free fonts called Dayfont, D-A-F-O-N-T. It's a free program that you can download millions of fonts to your computer. Um, and you can find ones that have the tails at the, at the first and the last letter in the words. So you can also use Canva, but I don't find that they have any of those type of graphics. 
Yeah, the Canva, I don't find, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's like a little wing on the on the first and the last letter. I have, and I use Canva all the time, every day, and I don't think I have found, and maybe somebody else has, but I don't think I have found any that have that. But you probably, uh, if you look around day font, um, you might find something that would work for you. Okay, so this is not bad, actually. This is not bad. It's, there's a couple spots where it's kind of rubbed off a little bit, but this is promising. This is really promising. Definitely easier to rub off. Not as much paper. Yes, Creative Fabrica. Um, I don't use Creative Fabrica that much, actually. I'm kind of a Canva girl. I'm always on Canva. I find when I get on Creative Fabrica, it's too much and I get overwhelmed. Um, and for day font, to find fonts, it's very user-friendly and it, they have it set up so it's really easy to find different styles that you want. And I think Creative Fabrica, you can sign up for a membership. I'm not really 100% sure. Um, and then you can have access to all kinds of stuff. But day font's free. And Canva does have a, Canva does have a paid um, portion of it. But they still have lots of stuff that's free that you don't need to pay for. Hi, Beth. Oh, my goodness. I guess if you're going to... Be at the dentist office you might as well watch some crafting videos okay so here's my conclusion on the wood i think it actually works better there is only one spot here on the e that seems to be giving me a little bit of trouble and uh it didn't transfer very well um and the paper is or the napkin is rubbing off pretty easy but you know what guys i don't i don't for the amount of time that it's taking me to rub off, I find it takes me the same amount of time to do with the paper. <clears throat> I don't think it's really saving any time at all. Uh, and it is actually, even on this one, it is kind of lightening it up a little bit. I'm rubbing off some of the ink a little bit. It might seal the ink. Uh, you could try other transfer mediums, maybe, maybe like a spray adhesive or a polyacrylic sealer like you mentioned. Yeah, so this would be something to try, this transfer method using the napkin. Might be worth a try using the polyacrylic and see how that transfers with, uh, with this method. But it's not bad, it's definitely better. So you can see it's definitely better than the wine bottle, but it's not as good as this so you can see the difference see it's just not transferring as well and I'm rubbing just as much as I would with the paper and it's actually I'm finding it's even harder and let's see as I'm even rubbing it's even taking more of the and I can rub aggressive like this on the paper and the ink stays hmm um I've used very fine black marker to fill in the spots that rub off. Depends on the project. Can't really tell once it's, yeah, exactly. And, and you can use a um, uh, acrylic paint pen to fill in the little areas if you have to, if you rub off. But I, I kind of like the distressed look. I find it just gives it character, makes it look not perfect. I don't like anything that looks perfect. And that's one of the reasons why I always revert back to this, this method because I find using a Cricut to make signs, they just look too perfect. They just look mass produced, where with this technique, you're never going to have two signs that look the same because one area is gonna rub off a little and it's not gonna transfer as well, or you could have texture in your wood and the graphic doesn't stick as well in those areas. And it just, um, I don't know, I just, it doesn't look as good and I find that my signs that I use this method on sell better because they're one of a kind and people don't look at it and go, oh, hey, I can make that, that's simple because they don't really know how it was made. It just doesn't look like a Cricut vinyl sign. Um, the water barely touched on the O in the coffee. Yeah, and it, it's kind of, 
How do you become a member? So if you go down to the description, you'll see the link to my channel membership and you can click on it and uh, that will take you right to the membership. I have two levels. I have a level for the discount uh, code for my Etsy store. And then I also have another level that's up a bit more for exclusive videos. I kind of do like behind the scenes, really in depth videos. They're not really edited. They're just kind of like just following along as I do a craft and um, I have lots of those videos on that, that tier of my membership. I got the Cricut Joy for my birthday and I honestly find it just to be a pain and tedious. Honestly, guys, I'm gonna be truthful. When I have to turn my Cricut on, I start to sweat. I, first of all, because I'm a thrifter and I don't like spending money, the vinyl's expensive, so I'm always afraid if I make a mistake, I'm going to waste vinyl because I don't use it enough. I'm not really good at it. If you're using it all the time, then you're not going to have the waste of the vinyl by making a mistake. But I just find by the time I do pull the Cricut out, cut it, weed it, I could have had the sign made already using this method um, for signs anyways. Now, if you're making t-shirts and you need an iron-on transfer, there's nothing better than a Cricut. Works fantastic for that, for doing iron-on transfers because it's washable. You can put it on fabric. This method will not work on fabric or for iron-on transfers or anything like that. So it does have its place, but as far as doing signs, um, this is using the Mod Podge graphic transfer is my, my go-to. So. Hi, thanks for joining my my um, channel. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys so much for supporting my channel. It's just amazing. Um, I'm Last week or the week before, I crossed over 200,000 crafting friends and that just seems unfathomable to me to have that many friends and all with the love of crafting and to share my tutorials with you all is um, so much fun. Buy vinyl at the dollar store. Yes, I'm in Canada, Ontario, Canada. We do not have a good section for vinyl at the dollar store. It's, we just don't have it. But I wish we did because I would buy more. Uh, do we just need to wait for the Mod Podge and paper to become completely dry before wetting and rubbing it off or do we have to wait the 24 hours? If you're using the paper, wait 24 hours. I found with the napkin, it dried quicker. You probably don't need to wait the 24 hours. Um, but as you can see, so this one's almost done. I don't like it. I, I don't like it at all. It hasn't transferred well. Um, it's just as hard to rub the napkin off as it was the paper. I mean, it is distressed. It does give it character. I shouldn't say I, I don't, I don't hate it, but I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, I'm still rubbing off the paper or the napkin and honestly, I could have had the paper one done in the same amount of time and I didn't have to tape it on the piece of paper or run it through my printer. I could have just ran the paper through the printer and done it. So I'm not sure if it saved any time either. Um, my daughter got me one about two years ago. I feel the same way. I don't like wasting and it kind of intimidates me. Yeah, I, it, it, me too with the Cricut. The vinyl at the Dollar Tree won't cut for me without cutting all the way through. That might have something to, yeah, the settings, I'm not sure. Thank you, 200,000. I know, it's just unbelievable. Thanks so much, Rita. Um, do you have a ladybug desk vacuum? I don't. Maybe I need one because all of this stuff ends up on my floor and then my dog walks through it and then I have a little paper pieces through my whole house. Somebody send me a link to that ladybug um, vacuum. That might be something good. If you, and actually, if you guys follow me over on Facebook or Instagram, you can send me private messages with pictures of your projects that you're working on, and I would love to see them. The links to those uh, platforms are down in the description, so follow me over there too. And my Instagram stories, I'm on there every day sharing my antics and everything that's going on. Uh, if not, I'm buying one. Um, I'm getting one for you. Watch your mail. Oh, Paige, <laughs> this, uh, the, I've never even heard of the, the late, the ladybug desk vacuum. That sounds really intriguing. I'm, uh, that would be exciting. Can you use contact paper? You can get a big roll of white at Walmart for $7. Works great for signs. Oh, okay. 
Walmart. See, so here's the thing. I see everything that you all can buy in the States for crafting and I'm jealous because here in Canada, we don't have Hobby Lobby, we don't have Target, we have crappy dollar stores, but we do have Michaels, but it's overpriced, so you have to make sure that you use a discount code. Um, so our crafting, our crafting abilities to buy a lot of different stuff is kind of limited. You guys can get so much more cool stuff than we can here. So I think I've, I've got all this rubbed off. I would definitely seal this with a polyacrylic sealer. This is my frame. Um, oh, I'm gonna have to move my hangers because it's on the wrong way, but I'm gonna press this in here. Let's see what it looks like. I don't hate it. It actually is not bad, actually, when you have it in the distressed frame, it's it's not bad. So I would put a coat of polyacrylic sealer over the whole thing. If you want a really distressed look, you don't want a really dark ink transfer, then this napkin, and you don't want to rub a whole bunch of paper off. If you have arthritis in your fingers and it's hard to rub all that paper off, then this might not be a bad option. Um, I have a ladybug vacuum. It's small, but it's convenient. Yeah, I'm wondering if it would be really convenient to get up all of this little stuff. Yeah. Oh, you're, yeah, we have none of that in here on PI. If you're over in, on the island, yes. We only have Dollarama. Uh, I'm on the other advice buying on Amazon now. I said, oh, Paige, you're a sweetheart. Um, I'll put, send me, give me a comment down below and I'll, uh, I'll give you my address. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Cutting all the way through, you can go in and set the pressure to, okay, so on a Cricut, I don't know much about the Cricut to know how to adjust your settings, but that could be why it's not cutting all the way through. I was thinking of taking a drive to the border and going to all those stores in Maine. I know we're not far from, um, I could go to Syracuse and drive over the border, but our dollar stinks. So by the time we do the exchange rate on it, I don't know how much money I'd be actually saving. I'm not very tech savvy, so I don't know how to reverse text for making things. I have a full, like I said before, a full tutorial, how to reverse graphics on your Google Drive. If you're intimidated, grab some graphics, uh, a couple graphics out of my Etsy store, use a discount code if you're the member, and uh, you don't have to worry about the reverse and fiddling with it. And there are also all kinds of beautiful um, graphics on Etsy with different creators too that have so many designs and they're really affordable to buy. Any of my graphics you can use um, over and over and I don't care if you make them and sell them either. I don't have any copyright issues. Buy them, create with them, sell them, make some money. Um, I live in Buffalo. Are you far away from the Peace Bridge? I'm actually, yeah. I, so... I am probably about six or seven hours to get to Buffalo from here. I would cross over um, at Syracuse. That would be where I would go across. Uh, so, oh yeah, 67 cents per dollar. I know our, our, um, our exchange rate's horrible right now for American. So I hope this was helpful. It was fun and I like doing this, kind of bringing you guys along as I'm as I'm experimenting and trying these different techniques because trial, trial and error, I save you guys the headache and um, you can also see in real time how long it actually takes to put these things together. I find when you're on YouTube and I've done a video that's eight minutes long, that eight minute video has probably taken me an hour and a half to create and you just don't get the sense of the real time of creating these projects. So these lives are great and I hope you guys like them too. Um, so I'm gonna sign off here. Appreciate all of your support here in my channel. Thanks for everybody that sent me super chats along the way here and uh, and supporting my channel by joining my membership. It, it, it's great. I am so thankful that I'm able, this is my full-time job. I have myself and my daughter. My daughter works for me also. She does all of the behind scenes um, with um, my editing and um, my newsletters and some of my social media. So all the support that you guys give me is, uh, is so helpful and I appreciate it all. So I'm going to sign off. I have a video going up on Saturday on DIY rub and buff. It's fantastic, easy um, recipe. If you've seen everybody using this rub and buff, 
it's really expensive and as we were just talking about here in Canada it's even more expensive I wanted to figure out how to make my own I put a recipe together did a video on it and that's gonna go up on Saturday so uh, keep a watch out for that so thanks for watching guys and um, we will see you in the next video have a great day